okay now before we study the complete functions of the nucleus just look at the structure of the nucleus the nucleus is a dark body it's a round body found in the plant and animal cell and this nucleus it consists of some material called as genetic material so this genetic material is nothing but a dna so inside it has got some fluid we call this as nucleoplasm so nucleoplasm so inside the nucleoplasm the genetic material is floating that is the dna here we have and inside the nucleus there is one more dark body called as nucleolus nucleolus so these are the different parts of a nucleus and the nucleus is surrounded by nuclear membrane nuclear membrane so a nucleus is surrounded by nuclear membrane inside the nucleus there is some fluid filled material called as a nucleoplasm and in the nucleoplasm there is the genetic material that is the dna and it has got one more dark body called as nucleolus now let us come back to the functions of the nucleus so what are the different functions of the nucleus now let us see the functions of the nucleus so already we discussed one function of the nucleus that is controls it controls various activities inside the cell different activities and different organelles are controlled by the nucleus that is the one major function the second function is it is the storehouse of genetic information genetic information so that is the genetic material the dna so that is the storehouse nucleus contains the genetic information about the cell or about that organism and the third one is the nucleus plays a major role in cell division cell division is a very important biological process cell division is important for growth of an organism we know that the cells they come from the new cells come from the pre existing cells so how do they come from the pre existing cells the pre existing cells they are to be divided so only when the division takes place then the new cells come so cell division either mitotic division or meiotic division the cell division is a very important biological process and for this cell division the nucleus plays a major role because the genetic material which is required for the formation of a new cell is located inside the nucleus so these are the major functions of the nucleus so depending upon the nucleus organisms are divided to prokaryotes and eukaryotes so what are prokaryotes 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 means these are the organisms which have an unorganized unorganized nucleus so what does it mean so their nucleus is not organized that means it is not having a nuclear membrane and it is not having a specific shape so the genetic material is simply spread in the cytoplasm of the organism so such organisms are called as prokaryotes so they don't have a distinguished or a separate or a distinct nucleus so the nuclear material either it is dna or rna that is distributed in the cytoplasm of the cell or the organism such organisms are called as prokaryotes so the other type is eukaryotes so these eukaryotes they have an organized nucleus so what does the organized nucleus means organized nucleus organized nucleus it has got a specific shape the nucleus is having the nuclear material nucleoplasm and it is bound up by nuclear membrane so that is called as an organized nucleus and the organisms that have an organized nucleus are called as eukaryotes this way on basing the nucleus organisms are divided to prokaryotes and eukaryotes so do all cells have the nucleus no 
there are certain exemptions most of the cells they have a nucleus but human rbc you take the red blood cells they do not have a nucleus and at the same time if you see the plant cells we can take the example of phloem sieve tubes phloem sieve tubes also do not have a nucleus there are some other examples in which the cells do not possess a nucleus that is for a specific purpose so here we have studied the different functions and structure of the nucleus now we are going to talk about the other important part of the cell that is the cytoplasm so what is this cytoplasm cytoplasm is the fluid that is present inside the cell so this fluid is bound by the cell membrane so the fluid that is present inside the cell membrane this is called as cytoplasm so cytoplasm is the medium in which all the other cell organelles like nucleus endoplasmic reticulum golgi apparatus and plastids or whatever so all the different cell org organelles are floating in this cytoplasm so cytoplasm is basically composed of water plus ions plus other minerals plus and other nutrients like carbohydrate amino acids and whatever so so all these are the different things which make up this cytoplasm so can we say this cytoplasm as protoplasm no there are some differences between the cytoplasm and the protoplasm now let us see what is the difference so here let us conclude about the cytoplasm this cytoplasm is a medium which provide nutrients nourishment and whatever needed to the different cell organelles present inside the cell okay now we are going to know the difference between cytoplasm and protoplasm so what is this protoplasm earlier days when the cell was discovered they found that there is some essential life forming material found inside the cell so they do not know the cell organelles and other constituents completely by the time just they thought there is some fluid inside the cell so this fluid is responsible for the formation of the life so they gave the name protoplasm so the life forming fluid important fluid so that is the protoplasm but later when it was made clear that the cell is not only having the protoplasm it has got distinct organelles different different organelles and it has got different kinds of fluids that is inside the cell there is a kind of fluid called as cytoplasm and here inside the nucleus it has got nucleoplasm so they are different so when it was made clear then the name protoplasm it is renamed to cytoplasm so the fluid that is found inside the cell again the fluid that is found inside the nucleus is named as nucleoplasm so earlier it all together as a single fluid it was considered as a same fluid that is found inside the cell which is responsible or important for life so then it was called as protoplasm but later it made clear that not only protoplasm there are so many things there is nucleus there is mitochondria there is cytoplasm there is nucleus so there is nucleoplasm so when all these things are revealed out then this the term protoplasm they stop using this protoplasm and they are writing that cytoplasm to the fluid that is found inside the cell okay so far we studied about the cell membrane cell wall and nucleus and about cytoplasm now we are going to discuss about the important cell organelles the different cell organelles like mitochondria mitochondria is the most important cell organelle that helps in the function of producing energy it is the powerhouse of the cell and we are going to learn about the important cell organelles plastids 
they play a major role in plants that is chloroplast preparation of the food for the plant and we are going to learn about endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus Golgi apparatus and we learn about ribosomes and we also learn about lysosomes and we also learn about vacuoles so these are the other cell organelles which we are going to learn now now we are going to study about endoplasmic reticulum So what is this endoplasmic reticulum? It is a network of membranes that is found in the cytoplasm of the cell. So when the cell is observed under a microscope, there we can find a network of tubes and sheets inside the cell. So this endoplasmic reticulum, it provides basic strength and support to the cell. It forms the basic skeleton, this network of sheets and tubes it forms the framework of this cell the cytoplasm so here this endoplasmic reticulum it is connected to the nucleus and to the other parts of the cell the major function of this endoplasmic reticulum is the transportation of substances from one part of the cell to another part so the substances that come from the nucleus are transported to different parts of the cells through this network of tubes that is the endoplasmic reticulum so the first function is transport so transport of substances inside the cell inside the cytoplasm from one place of the cytoplasm to other side other place of the cytoplasm and even it helps in the transport of material from nucleus to other areas so in these different ways it helps in transportation so what is the other function of this endoplasmic reticulum this endoplasmic reticulum, it provides surface for the formation of different materials. So the formation of different materials, we call synthesis, that is preparation, preparation of different materials. Synthesis of different materials is done by some special organelles called as ribosomes. So these ribosomes, where do they stay? Just compare the ribosomes are the machines. So these machines which prepare the materials like proteins. So the proteins are synthesized by the ribosomes and these ribosomes, where are they located? They are in the endoplasmic reticulum. So they stay in the endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum just like it acts like a factory where the machines are ribosomes which prepare the materials like proteins. So the proteins are very important for the growth of the cell, for the repair of the cell or for the formation of a new cell. So the proteins are to be prepared, synthesized continuously. So they who take up the job? Ribosomes take up the job of preparing proteins. And these ribosomes, where do they stay? They are attached to the membranes of the endoplasmic reticulum. So endoplasmic reticulum is providing space for the ribosomes to prepare proteins. So the endoplasmic reticulum which provide place to the ribosomes and which helps in the preparation synthesis of proteins that endoplasmic reticulum is called as rough endoplasmic reticulum. So it is rough because of the ribosomes are attached to their membranes. So the rough endoplasmic reticulum it helps in the preparation of proteins proteins are prepared here endoplasmic reticulum also helps for the preparation synthesis of another substance that is lipids or the fats these lipids are synthesized in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum we call it as ser smooth endoplasmic reticulum so the two important functions one is the transportation of substances and information or messengers 
so whatever so inside the cell from one place of the cytoplasm to the other place or from nucleus to other parts that job is taken up by this endoplasmic reticulum and the second important function is that it provides space for the ribosomes and it helps in the preparation of materials like proteins and lipids so it has got one more function earlier we discussed it that is the support it is the basic skeleton of the cell it gives structure and support to the cell and it is made up of so many tubes and sheets the next cell organelles golgi body or we call it as golgi apparatus so what are these golgi bodies or golgi apparatus so these are the vesicles and sac like structures found inside the cell so here we can see that vesicles and sac like structures so these sac like structures are bound to fluid filled vesicles so what do they contain what is its function we already studied about the endoplasmic reticulum so what is this endoplasmic reticulum doing the endoplasmic reticulum is providing the surface it is giving the space for ribosomes and other things to prepare materials so different materials are produced here like proteins or enzymes or different things are prepared here so these things are transported to these golgi apparatus for the purpose of packing and distribution so the major part taken up by this golgi apparatus is packing and distribution of the materials that are produced here in the endoplasmic reticulum so these enzymes and proteins and other materials are packed they are slightly altered a little bit modification takes place in the golgi apparatus after the modifications they are packed and sent to lysosomes so lysosomes so what do these lysosomes do they carry these materials these enzymes or proteins or whatever so materials to the cell membrane so that is towards the cell membrane here they blast and they send they supply or distribute these materials and these materials may be used to repair a particular part or it may be used to regenerate repair or for different purposes so that is the basic thing here the golgi apparatus just acts like a packing packing unit and it slightly alter the substances that are produced at endoplasmic reticulum little modifications takes place here and after that the materials are packed and parcel out so that is the major function of this golgi bodies so these golgi bodies or golgi apparatus were observed by the scientist camillo golgi in 1898 so who is he camillo golgi so in honor of him his name is given to this cell organelle and it is called as golgi bodies or golgi apparatus the number of the golgi bodies varies from one cell to another cell some of the cells especially the cells of parts which involve in the process of secretion like glands you take pancreas or you take salivary glands so in these cases the cells they contain more num number of golgi bodies because the golgi bodies they involve in the function of secretion packing and producing the different enzymes or proteins so the organs which involve in the function of secretion secreting some enzyme or some substance in such organs in such cells the number of golgi bodies are more 